friends, welcome back to Kiki's Closet. A little over a year ago, my life became a whole lot wackier when I made my debut in Spamilton, an American parody. Today, we're gonna chat with some friends who have come into my life because of it. Let's go. Come on and come and play in Kiki's Closet today. Alright folks, please help me welcome the original Lin-Manuel Miranda, Mr. Dan Rosales. What's up, man? How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you doing? Doing well. I'm doing well. I'm surviving. You're in the Berkshires, right? I am in the Berkshires, currently in our last week of Godspell. All eyes in the theater community are kind of on, on your show right now. How has that been? I mean, it's been a whirlwind. It's been literally every emotion that you could name. We've experienced it in one way or another. I think our very first day of rehearsal, we had a meeting with Equity because it was the first approved Equity sanctioned musical in the nation. And Kate Schindel got on our Zoom call and she was like, just to let you know, like the entirety of the American theater is watching you. And we were all, we all kind of just like sat back a little in our chairs. We were like, okay, <laughs> all right, no pressure at all. It's been an incredible learning experience. We all like knock on wood, thank God, it's been completely safe and they've enforced all these protocols and everything to keep us safe and the audience safe and you know it's gone off without a hitch. We hope you know this allows future union productions to happen all across the country. What was that rehearsal experience like because you were all you know being very safe and socially mm -hmm. distancing and like us theater people we're so touchy we hug each other we you know we're so like emotional. And, like, yep. What was it like to, to to be a part of that process and not be able to, you know, to do that. It is a, an experience, a theatrical experience unlike any other for the audience and for us like doing the show, you know, there's no blocking involving people touching each other or people coming within six feet of each other. Or if they do, you know, we both have to be masked up and there cannot be any contact between one another. Um, the way that this particular production is happening, the Berkshire Theater Group came up with a set of protocols for keeping us safe. So we're all tested multiple times per week and we all are quarantined and isolated together and live together. So in other elements, when we're not on stage, we're allowed a little bit more freedom, but to keep the show safe and to keep the protocols running like we don't we don't touch we're not within each other so the rehearsal process has been unique to say the least we had to use a different part of our brain and we collectively as a cast along with the director and choreographer for music director kind of felt how we were able to explore this new realm together. What is one thing that you'll leave this experience with? I mean, overwhelmingly just gratitude for everything that's happened and all of the different like tracks that had to fall into place for this particular show to come together. I mean, we're very upfront that there were people that were supposed to do this and denied it for their own personal reasons or they didn't feel safe enough or, you know, the timeline didn't work out for them. And that's okay. There's no shame in that. It, but vice versa, there's no shame in us wanting to work and be safe, you know, for our own uh, livelihoods. Now, yeah. you're from Cali originally. Exactly. Yeah. Outside of LA, I'm from Thousand Oaks. Did you grow up doing theater? I did, but by accident. So when I was in middle school, I was like, you know, kind of rambunctious that I didn't know what to do and I needed to be in this before school, after school program. I signed up for Color Guard, which I had no idea what it was because the way that it was described to me was like, oh yeah, you know, you get to run around in the field after school and like shoot fake guns at each other, which was problematic to begin with. But, you know, I was like, oh, that sounds fun as like an 11 year old. And then I got to the first day and I was so intimidated by all these girls waving flags that I was like, I can't do this, I can't do this. So I ran back to the principal's office and the only other option was choir so I started like singing choir and then that like spiraled into this whole career now I guess it was a happy accident. When was the first time you saw yourself represented on stage? That's, that's a hard question because I wasn't for a long time and I had to pretend that I was these other people that I saw represented on stage or on screen. And it really wasn't until like late into high school, like, or maybe like even in college when I was like, wait, no, none of these people that I've seen are actually who I am or who my family is or what our struggle, what our journey has been. And to be completely honest with you, the first time I saw anything like myself that I can like vividly remember was like, in the heights. I right. do have to tell you, so so this cutout, this cutout <laughs> is from Spamilton. So oh, oh know, my gosh, yes, is it from the, the wait, what is it so, from? <laughs> okay, so you know when Alexander puts the satchel 
uh, yes. on in Hamilton. Mm-hmm. He does the same in Spamilton. And then, like, I turn around, and then you see the face on the backpack. And I like do a wink, <laughs> and like it's so cheesy, but it was a big hit, so I took it with me when I left. <laughs> oh my god, I'm obsessed. He usually lives in my closet, but I brought him out for this Spamilton episode because I thought it was appropriate. Uh, uh, so yeah, let's talk about let's it. talk about Spamilton. So you were auditioning for let's the show. Do it. You, did, you didn't know it was Spamilton, right? It was called Untitled Parody Musical, and it was for a two week run at the Triad Theater. And there was no music, nothing involved. I literally think the breakdown said, sing something funny. I booked it. Uh, it, We still didn't know what it was up until our first rehearsal. We had no idea. And rehearsals were fast and furious. We had no idea what the music was like, that it was a parody musical, that it was spoofing Hamilton. And so we learned everything on the fly, like all of these numbers that were completely different from Hamilton, mostly. And you were like, oh, okay, I think I understand. This is like, you know, kind of extrapolated from Skylar Sisters or this is from, you know, uh, Impossible Dream. And it was a huge hit. And then you moved downtown. Yeah, and we moved downtown. Lynn, Lynn came to see it. What was that like performing for him? Did you know he was um, coming? Were you freaking out? Walk me through. Yeah, we, we knew he was coming. So this... It was like a weird uh, full circle moment because when him and Vanessa were expecting their first child, I my first job in New York City was working at a restaurant called Isabella's on the Upper West Side. And I think literally the day before, the week before they gave birth, they came in. It was the two of them and I served them. And at that point, I didn't want to say anything. You know, I was like, oh man, this guy's like my hero. Like he's so great. But you know, I just served them. I brought him his... Uh, dark and stormy I think he ordered and they were so nice the whole time then left me a huge tip and I you know walked them out the door and said thank you so much and that was it so I knew he was coming and I think I kind of like blacked out a little bit you know I try not to let the people coming get to me so I just like did my show and it happened to be a good show and afterwards I tell him this story he's like oh my gosh yes of course wait I remember yeah we went to Isabella's and we met him afterwards and it was great. I mean, he loved it. He came, I think he came twice. His parents came separately. Um, I mean, he's been, he's been an amazing inspiration. And even for Godspell, I mean, he reached out and sent me like a DM saying, I'm so happy that theater is happening somewhere and that you are a part of it, you know, break all the legs and have a great run with Godspell. And at that moment I was like man this guy can't get any better you know it speaks to you know the kind of character he is that he can go and watch this spoof that is I think I think it's a loving spoof of of him and musical theater and like really enjoy it because I don't think everyone in the business necessarily has that sense of humor about themselves no definitely you have to take it with a grain of salt and he was such a good sport about it I mean we you know the show we blatantly make fun of his singing we make fun of his rapping and it's all lighthearted and good fun but some people can take even that the wrong way and he was just a good sport about it the entire time I mean our original run of Samuelson when we were still at the triad I think Tommy Kale and him found out that most of us hadn't seen the show yet so they arranged and got us like uh, Bounder Circle tickets to go through the show at the Richard Rogers. Just so generous of them to even come to the show, but then to invite us to their show was, uh, you know, out of this world. When I was learning Spamilton, mm-hmm. I really learned it like listening to you on the recording. <laughs> so it's very cool that I'm getting to, to chat with you about this experience because this part, Lynn Manuel Miranda as Alexander Hamilton, and yes, that is literally how it is listed in the playbill. Uh, I know. So wild. <laughs> when you get back to New York, what do you do to keep yourself artistically fulfilled? A lot of, you know, texts and phone calls with friends and family. Um, a lot of playing with my dog, even with my partner. And I'm fortunate enough to have a, a lot of creative people in my life. And of course, we're all artists. And you know whether it's throwing my support 100% into friends who are doing something like releasing a music video or, or a comedy series or a, an interview series, you know, just throwing yourself into that as much as you can, whether or not you're getting that personal, like, fulfillment out of it uh, has been keeping me sane. I want to thank you again for joining me here uh, on my show. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure, and I'm so glad we got to meet face-to-face another way. Yes, thank you so much, Dan. <laughs> Take care. Thank you, too. Bye-bye. 
I met these fabulous ladies spending summer 2019 at Pittsburgh CLO. They can do it all. They can rap, they can belt, they can riff, they can impersonate many Broadway divas, and now they're here in Kiki's closet. Please help me welcome Erin Riley Ramirez and Jessica Val Ortiz. Hey girls, how are you? Great. How have you two been over the last six months? Yeah, I was uh, at the very end of my college career. Uh, whenever Corona hit, I whew, graduated online, which I mean, I'm glad I graduated, but you know, sucked that I had to end this way. Did not get to showcase, did not get to do the whole New York thing, which was really unfortunate. But through all of this crazy Corona madness, I got this really cool job. I, awesome new apartment. Um, my family and I have like never been closer. Yeah, life has actually been like really good. I got TikTok and I have almost 500,000 followers on it, which is so weird. And I've just been like goofing off on there and I guess people like it. How about you, Erin? Um, honestly, it's been really tough. Um, it's been tough to find motivation to really create things. I used to like, uh, write a lot of music in that my times at home but re recently there's just been kind of a block so I'm kind of working through that but yeah it really is tough and I feel like most of the ways that I've been growing as an artist is just through growing as a person and really figuring out um, my identity outside of our career you know so and I think that's probably what a lot of people are going through and I think that's gonna be really refreshing for the community I think. Now, towards the end of our run of Spamilton, Erin went back to New York to audition for a little show called Les Mis, and then yeah. she booked it. She left us for a little while while Jess got to take over. Mm -hmm. And uh, why don't you tell us a little about going on tour with the show? Well, first of all, thank you, Jess, for covering my butt during both the <laughs> time I went and auditioned and then also when I went and rehearsed the show. So it was actually pretty crazy because right when I joined the cast, they were about to go on a month layoff. So I was able to go and rehearse with Les Mis for two weeks and then come back and finish Spamilton, do the rest of the layoff, and then go back and debut in the show after having them having a month off, you know? So that was pretty crazy. I did, a, I did like a week of performances in ensemble and then they uh, started teaching me Eponine and I randomly had an Eponine debut because the girl that was playing Eponine was doing a Hamilton audition, which she booked. So, um, so then, yeah. So later, I got to see her go on as Eliza, which was incredible. But yeah, so my debut was when she was auditioning for that. And so it's so funny how it's like this chain of like <laughs> people covering each other and people booking. So I was with the show for six months. Uh, I had just signed my second writer when everything happened. I mean, that show is just musical theater dreams. Um, and what was so funny is, you know, coming from Spamilton, my improv slash comedy chops were like at their sharpest maybe. And so, or at least they were fresh in my mind. And so like coming on to Les Mis, which is so dramatic. And like, like, I just remember like having to totally like switch. And I mean, what worked out really well is the cast is so funny. Like you wouldn't think so, but the Les Mis cast is Hilarious. What was so cool was that I, as I was going on my first national tour in Spamilton, Erin was going on her national tour in Les Mis, and when Erin was in Buffalo, my hometown, my mom got to go see her, and then when I was in Kansas City yeah. at the Kansas City Starlight, Erin's family got to come see me, and we both got to see each other's families yeah. after the show and say hi and take pictures. And I, I thought that that felt very full circle too, just because yeah. of, we both like kind of left Spamilton in, in Pittsburgh and then went on our next adventures, and it just and it just we crossed. were like indirectly supporting each other through our parents. So in Spamilton, these two fabulous ladies portray not only the leading lady in our Hamilton parody portion of the show, but they portray so many different divas throughout. So I thought it would be only appropriate to play a little diva trivia. I'm going to give a fun fact about some of the divas they portrayed in the show, and I want these two ladies to guess who they are. And away we go. Okay, this diva turned down a Tony nomination because she felt the rest of her cast wasn't the proper recognition that they deserved. Barbara Streisand? Is it Bernadette? 
Oh, Julie Andrews! Julie Andrews for Victor Victoria. She turned down a Tony nomination. Can you imagine doing that? This next diva was the only child of two Academy Award winners to ever win an Oscar herself. Barbara Streisand? Liza Minnelli. Yes! <laughs> of course, with, with Judy Garland and Vincent yeah. Minnelli. Yeah. <laughs> this next diva was nominated for 46 Grammy Awards. Barbara Streisand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Barbara Streisand, yes. Aaron, Aaron's kicking your butt, Jess. I know. Let's see if you can get this last one, okay? Okay. This next diva is the youngest performer ever to be inducted into the Theater Hall of Fame. Bernadette Peters. Yay! Hey! <laughs> All right, I gotta ask, who, who was your favorite diva to impersonate in Spamilton? At first, it was probably Barbara, but then, Towards the end, I really grew an appreciation for Eliza. I do have to say one of my favorite memories from the show was when Jess was on for you and she came on <laughs> with her wig on backwards. Literally her wig was on backwards. The rest of the boys, we lost it. We couldn't even we couldn't sing, we couldn't we couldn't do anything. We were laughing the entire number because her wig was on. <laughs> so it's actually really funny because coming into like the audition. I had burned that impression on my resume. And like, I like did this thing at school where I'd go up to people and I'd say their name and I'd be like, I'm Bernard Peters and you're in trouble. And I would just like say that to people and it was so weird. And so like, in the beginning I was like, oh, Bernadette's the one I got in the bag. But then <laughs> throughout like the runs, I realized that I loved doing Barbara the most. Like that was just like, like nothing tops that. We're kind of getting word that it's going to take a little longer for us to get back on stage and live performance. Uh, I want to know what's keeping you hopeful. I um, have a really strong relationship with God and I just am trusting that like everything uh, is going to unfold as it should and that he's in control and that if he wants me to be in shows again, then it'll happen. And if not, I'm not gonna be unhappy you know uh i i mean obviously i i'm count I'm, I'm hoping that we're able to work again soon but but it's not who i am it's not my identity anymore and i'm not like gonna be broken and devastated if you know things aren't the same again because they probably won't be they're not gonna be the yeah. same after this yeah i like going on instagram and facebook and seeing how driven everyone is and seeing you know people literally kicking their own butts in their living room like doing this impossible dance combination and you know singing and like fully giving all their all like whenever the arts come back like it's going to be bigger and better than ever i also was so inspired to hear about the production of Godspell that happened in the Berkshires. Listening to the daily podcast about it, like, and just like hearing the conversations of the cast and hearing like the the audience and everything like that, it just made me like emotional thinking about like, oh wow, this is a really special thing that we do and the world is aching for it, you know, and we're aching for it. What's keeping me hopeful is getting to see you two ladies back on stage and getting to share a stage with you again one day soon. So mm -hmm. I want to thank you both for joining me today here in my fake closet on my couch. Kiki's <laughs> couch with a K. And Kiki's I love couch. you both. <laughs> I love you both so very much. Take care, okay? Love you. Come on, come on and come and play in Kiki's closet today.